Hello and welcome to Lake Mountain. My name is Jill Sylvie. I'm the Salt Lake Field Manager for the Bureau of Land Management here in Salt Lake City. Now just to give you some idea of where we are, the Lake Mountains are a small mountain chain. They're only about 12 miles long and 7 miles wide that sits about 30 miles to the south of Salt Lake City. And we're going to talk to you today about a wide variety of issues, including cultural resources, fire uh, issues, some change in ecology. There's also a major highway, a fairly large two-lane road that goes from Salt Lake City to the areas to the south. And of course with that access we get a lot of people that come here to recreate, mainly target shooters, although it has presented a number of challenges. Namely, it's the conversion of this pristine sagebrush habitat that's prone now to fires, you can see here in the farther distance, and that's converting it over to this cheatgrass area. It's of primary concern to us. But right now, I'm going to let a number of my staff specialists tell you a little bit more in depth about the area and the, and the situation that we have here. And we wanted to show you not only some of the issues about the trash and debris that we have out here, but it's also unsafe shooting practices. And if you can imagine, the shooters are basically set up where the camera is. And they're shooting towards me and they're shooting towards this berm but if you're an inexperienced shooter or you're just careless you don't have good muzzle control your your rounds can ricochet or just go right over the top of this ridge and just down below us is a state highway and then just on the other side of that ridge is a, a residence and we've had an incident this year already where bullets were impacting that house and we had a major safety hazard we've also had a near miss incident in another portion of the Lake Mountains out here where a school bus of high school kids were forced to take cover and actually hit the ground to avoid uh, bullets flying over their heads uh, because of careless shooters and that was reported in the media uh, earlier this spring. Um, also if we pan around to this general area you can see that there's a lot of unsafe uh, issues in this area with terrain. What we have out here on really busy holiday uh, or uh, weekend days you'll have maybe 10, 15, sometimes 20 vehicles in this general area all trying to find a place to shoot. And in some cases, people will drive up on top of this, uh, of this bench here and then people will come in after them and start set up and start shooting, not realizing or not bothering to find out if there's people up on top of this bench. Those people then come driving out right into the line of fire of the people below them. And we have a very unsafe situation out here with target shooting in this area. Over the past 10 years, we've had about 130 human-caused fires out here. And you can see that out over time, as these fires continue to burn from year to year, uh, what it can actually do to the landscape. These areas don't have time to recover in between the different fires that happen. And it's often these same areas that burn so frequently that really the only thing we're left with are noxious weeds and invasive plants things of that nature that come back into this area. It creates areas like this that are fairly moonscaped at this point. The south and southeast slope of the Lake Mountains contain a variety of very important cultural resources. Principal among them are rock art sites that are made up of petroglyphs. The glyphs themselves can be seriously affected by target shooting in, in one of two ways, both directly and indirectly. The direct impacts are associated with, with bullet impacts, literally, on the petroglyphs. We have documented evidence of some petroglyphs being targeted where target shooters literally were firing directly at the, at the petroglyphs. And in other cases, the petroglyphs have been impacted by, by bullets accidentally. Um, but they're damaged nonetheless, and the damage is irreversible. I just wanted to reiterate to you that we are working cooperatively with a wide variety of local, state, and other federal partners to try to come up with a way to manage these issues. We think that this is a pretty unique area and that it can serve a wide variety of people in a wide variety of ways. And we're looking for solutions cooperatively through a wide variety of partners. Thanks so much for listening.